Welcome to HB Tuners for Gen 1 Coyote Training Part 26. In this training module, we're going to be taking a look at how to dial in our cranking and warm up fuel for our Coyote engines. It's a relatively straightforward process. We're going to outline all the things you need to know. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our cranking and warm up fuel for our four Gen 1 Coyote applications. We'll find that the cranking fuel and the warm up enrichment is a pretty straightforward process in terms of calibrating and tuning. In fact, there's very little to actually change. I just want to go over in this video uh, the tables associated for cranking fuel and for the warm up enrichment type of conditions. And we'll take a look at the data log so we can see what to look for and what conditions we'll be entering and exiting when we're in cranking and firing off and actually having the engine run so we can kind of tie together where things fit. Um, I do want to give you a pre warning. There's very little to change here, and when we do find problems with the engine cranking over and firing and running, it's typically an issue with fuel injector data not being entered in correctly, so you have bad injector data or you haven't dialed in your math curve properly as I outlined in previous tutorials. So as long as you've entered all that data in and you know when the engine's actually running, your fuel trims look good, you should find that the engine cranks, fires, and runs just as it did stock. Let's dig in here and take a look at the tables associated with our cranking fuel and uh, our warm up so we understand where that's coming from and then we will go look at our data log example so we can uh, just see what it looks like plot it into our VCM scanner. So the first thing I want to do is uh, take a look here under engine. I'm opening and taking a look at a 2014 Mustang GT file. This is a stock equivalent file with just some minor things changed. I haven't changed anything with the cranking fuel or the warm up. So if we take a look here, if we jump under fuel, and then we're taking a look under our general tab, we're gonna find our area here called cranking fuel. We have two different tables, cranking versus ECT, and then fuel cranking, flex fuel. Now we're not gonna be talking about anything flex fuel based right now, we will have a separate tutorial on that. Let's just keep things simple, and let's just talk about our cranking fuel, flex cranking versus ECT. Now looking at our table here, this is gonna be taking a look at the engine coolant temperature on our side axes. And then the values within the table here, these are going to be in terms of a desire or target lambda. Now, we understand, and we've talked about this in several other videos previous to this tutorial, what the underlying fuel and airflow model equation is going to be. That's fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target air fuel. Now, the way this is going to work, we register the amount of air mass coming from the mass airflow sensor in a cranking condition. So it'll report back grams per second, pound per hour, pound per minute value from the MAF sensor, report that back into the PCM. So it knows what the air mass is going to be. In this table, we're specifying what the target lambda is going to be in cranking conditions. Now, we're specifying also what the stoich air fuel is if we multiply lambda to the stoich air fuel, that's going to give us the target air fuel, which would be 14.08. So let's just say we're registering two or one and a half grams per second under cranking conditions of airflow from our MAF sensor. Divide that by 14.08, that'll get us a certain amount of grams per second of fuel mass. And actually we can just do the calculation real quick, just, just uh, go into calculator here. So let's just say here real quick that we have 1.5 grams per second and we're dividing it by, let's say, 14.08. We would then calculate we would need 0 0.1065 grams per second worth of fuel mass being delivered to the engine in cranking conditions. So that would then look up through the injector data, translate that into an injector pulse width, and pulse that as we're cranking over the engine um, and delivering the fuel that we need. So if we're finding, for some reason, in cranking conditions, that we're not getting the engine to fire off, um, so we're turning the key over, we're trying to crank it, it's not firing off clean, usually this is gonna be an issue cold. If you have a lot of modifications done, it can throw some things off. Again, if we have good injector data, we know when the engine's actually running, when it was warm, everything is good. You may need to go into our table here and drop down your target lambda under cranking. You might need to go to 0 0.8, 0 0.7. By going in and commanding a uh, richer target lambda mixture that'll bump up your injector pulse width. So just for example here, so we can see what that's gonna do. Remember previously, as we were just running the numbers, um, let's close this out here, let's go back into the calculator. Running the number through the calculator, we got approximately 0.1 grams per second worth of fuel flow. Now if I change my cranking lambda here at my colder temperatures where I typically need a little bit more fuel, let's say we're commanding 0.7 lambda here. Well, we would take, in this case, 14.08, uh, 
and then we multiply by 0.7. Let's just see what that's going to do, 0.7. That would give us 9.85. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.